As a last topic on our nuclear decay, it's fun to think about so-called decay chain reactions. When up till now, when we mention a decay, we say nucleus one decays to nucleus two, and we kind of stop there. And there's almost the implicit assumption that nucleus two is stable. Now, while that's certainly true for the smaller nuclei, when you get to the larger nuclei, they're going to continue to decay because each nucleus that's made is going to be unstable until you've decayed enough to get down to stability, i.e. atomic number of 83 or less. So let's look at one of those decay chains just for fun. We'll start off with one of the naturally occurring radioactive nuclei, one of three, thorium-232 and then the two uraniums. Thorium-232 is too big. So it decays by alpha decay to give you 228 radium. Now 228 radium is also too big, but it also has a really high neutron to proton ratio. So radium 228 decays via beta elimination to give you 228 actinium. Now at this point when we got an alpha and a beta up is worth pointing out the differences again in what happens to the nuclei. When you undergo an alpha decay the mass goes down by four and the atomic number goes down by two. When a nucleus undergoes beta decay the mass stays the same because of course a beta particle has no mass but the atomic number goes up by one as you're turning a neutron into a proton. So anyway, 228 actinium, still too big, but also has a few too many uh, neutrons. So it also undergoes beta decay to give you 228 thorium. So now essentially in three steps then, we've uh, got back to thorium, but we have lost a mass of four. Well, anyway, 228 thorium says, well, I'm still too big, so I'm only going to go an alpha decay to make 224 radium. Now, notice 224 radium's got four fewer neutrons, so therefore it's not going to do a beta decay like its, uh, its sister nucleus, 228 radium, is going to continue on alpha. When it does that, mass goes down by four, charge goes down by two, so we get down to radon. Get down to 216 polonium, mass by four, charge by two. And then we go to 212 lead. Okay, now you might say, oh, 82 is smaller than 83. That's stable. But unfortunately, lead 212 is radioactive. It's got too many neutrons. So lead 212, right? The ideal mass of lead is about 207. So 212 is too big. It's unstable. It's radioactive, undergoes beta decay to take you to 212, 83. 83, you say, oh, bismuth. We said that might be right. But again, 212 is too big for bismuth. So it needs to undergo another beta decay to get up to 212 polonium. 212 polonium, absolutely no doubt whatsoever that that is radioactive because it's got 84 protons, it kicks out an alpha particle and you end up with the stable isotope of lead 208. So total of six alpha decays. Now for each alpha decay the mass goes down by four, so six of them it's gone down by 24 and the charge goes down by two, so total charge down of minus 12. Okay, so the mass change is done going from 232 to 208. But as well as those six alphas, there are four betas. Beta doesn't affect the mass at all, but it does increase the charge on the nucleus by one each time, so four of them by a total of four. So overall, overall mass change to 32 down to 208 to change to 24. Overall charge change in this nice little um, chain from 90 down to 82. Overall charge change of eight. I like those chains, as I say. There's a few more considered in the quiz associated with this movie. So there we are, finished with our consideration of nuclear decay. There's a little bit more discussion in the extension about nuclear equations generally. Could have really gone into this in massive detail. I decided just to focus on a few small bits of it. Hope you enjoyed that and I hope you enjoyed this.